Afternoon everybody. If you don't know me, my name is Ryan and this is Perform Built Transmissions Little Learning Lab where today we're going to talk about more of the basics and someday soon we're going to get out and do more exciting stuff. But for now, there's so much confusion in the transmission world, especially with GM's basically now poster child that everybody's starting to have a little bit of faith in after the last 30 years of being complete failure. We are going to talk about the 4L60, the 65, and the 70, namely, what makes a 70 so special? Is it any special? And why does everybody want one so damn bad when they don't know the first thing about it? So that's what we're going to be covering. Now, I'm going to get into the 70 first, and we're going to walk down the train because I am aware there's a lot of guys with not an impressive attention span that can't handle a 15 20 minute video so we're going to get you this information first and you can be on your way uh, you know that maybe work on that a little bit but for the guys that can actually sit through a 15 minute video if you want to learn the rest is here and you're going to learn a lot you'll be better off than most people um, this video is going to be a stock for stock discussion uh, we aren't going to really talk about aftermarket the only thing I have to say about aftermarket is the only time a 4L60 or 65 matters to a 70 is one simple electronic and that's going to be determined by the standalone computer or the model year of your vehicle that you're using. Please talk to us first about it. Chances are you don't need a 70. Um, the reason I say that is the electronics, the Holley Terminator X Max is the only tuning software that truly needs a 70 and it's become such a problem I believe they're they've uh, made a 13 pin uh, harness to work with a 1665 for that program I only know this because I have one and I've talked to them before and I'm not bashing Holly in any way uh, it's a great product but from my understanding it's the only one that needed a 70 now anyway just to give you a quick overview the 4L70 came in model years of General Motors vehicles from usually 2007 to 2008. Some 2006s had this, namely the Trailblazer SS, which in my opinion was the only true 4L70, okay? So let's jump into that. I guess we'll work our way down and work our way back. This is a 4L70 transmission case, okay? This is a 4L60 transmission case. Spot the difference. Can't find one? That's because there really isn't one. They're not any thicker, stronger, better, faster, or greater. The only difference is the machining where it accepts the pump. And that's purely due to a change in seal, which in my opinion was completely useless. The 60 uses an O-ring. So does the 65. The 70 uses a compression seal held on by the bell housing. Now, that's just a case comparison. We're gonna talk about the rest of the 70 and move on. So, here's a pump backing for a 4L70, okay? Um, the pump face just doesn't have a slot for an O-ring. This is what's important. This is what you wanna pay attention to. A true 70, every 70, has this little hole and bolt hole right here. Okay, and it also takes a special stator with a large hole in it. That is for the only thing that makes a 70 a 70, an input speed sensor. Now this little diagnostic tool was the most useless little gimmick that was added into the transmission in my opinion, and it doesn't make it any better. Uh, in my opinion, it actually makes it worse. But this all comes from newer technology in the newer vehicles and good old government regulations and whatever the fuck else they had going on um, with all that jazz. But this thing reads the reluctor and your input speed on the input shaft. Uh, going back to what I was talking about before, the Holley Terminator X Max kind of needs this with their 15 pin harness and programming. Now, like I said, I believe they're making a 13 pin for it now because these two model years that this thing came out, these cores are getting hard to get. 
and they will cost you a lot of money no matter where you go. Junkyard, aftermarket manufacturer, Jasper, it don't matter. All because of this stupid little magnet. So for the guys that sit there and tell you a 70 is so much better because it's got all this shit, it doesn't. It actually has this and that's about it. That is the major difference. So for the ADD guys, you can stop watching now. That was the big topic. Now, getting into the rest of it, not every 70 had cool, cool shit, like five pinion planets, shot peen shafts and all that, but some did. Namely, the only true 70 in my book was the 2006 Trailblazer SS, 2007 and 2008 Trailblazer SS. <laughs> That was a big, rough, powerful, heavy vehicle from the factory. They needed to give the 60, 70, everything they could throw at it. So that transmission had five pinion planets, shot peen shafts, your input speed sensor, and a couple other little nuances like a 734 clutch. And that's where the 70 gets its 100 more torque slash horsepower rating from the factory even though that was really questionable. We went from about 3,350 to 400, and that's all they gave it, and that's the only real difference. So stock for stock, and for you guys saying it's the end all be all, it's not really a significant uh, increase, and not really impressive parts either, except for the five pinions. Not all 70s had five pinions. Most of them actually had four pinions and non-shot pin shafts. The input speed sensor was the difference. So, to go back into this, show off a little bit, some of the 70s came with this, namely that 2006 Trailblazer SS. Here's a 70 input shaft, okay? That's the reluctor I was talking about, that this thing reads through the pump stator. The 70 also had an extra seventh three four clutch okay that helped out probably more than not and this is a 70 harness okay compared to a 4l60 we have the plug for that speed sensor everything else is the same you got your two three one two pressure manifold tcc pwm three two downshift 15 pins and those two extra pins are for this plug to read that. All in all, that's about it. Uh, most 4L70s came in uh, with a little bit better of a low roller, a little bit different of a design with the rear ring gear, output ring gear, but those were very inconsequential and not really too important. Uh, overall, it's just that input speed sensor. That's it, sorry to disappoint. We're gonna be moving on to the 65 and 60. The 65 is another controversial topic. Uh, all 65s pretty much did come with five pinion planets. There may be a few model years GM put it in that didn't, but from my knowledge, they all did. They also came with a couple little nuances. Their case is very similar to a 70, but still takes an O-ring because in production to keep it moving, it wasn't cut all the way, but it's very close. The other thing is their input shaft. Now, as you can see, it's got a little fat land here. That was part of the production and keeping it streamlined. They were in preparation to start machining this reluctor on the 70 shaft. And of course, the five pinion planets, which I had mentioned. And lastly, going back to the pump backing, the true a true 65 did not have this hole, but it takes a 4L70 stator with the hole. But instead of a hole here, there's simply a notch cut out, but it's still casted in. Now, either one of those two stators needs to be with the appropriate pump, but this is where it matters, that land. In making that hole for the input speed sensor, they dropped all these sealing rings as well and squished them together a couple thousands just to accommodate that. So if you're mixing pumps and drums and all kinds of shit up when you're building your unit, 
that's something to keep an eye on because it can cause you a world of weird, weird issues. And usually it will blow out uh, the overrun ceiling ring and cause you all kinds of stuff, including a loss of lockup in some occasions. Going back to the 60, our last subject, the most basic form of it all. And this either can come from the one piece case that looks similar to the 700 or the two piece bolt on that they design later. Now the 4L60 always came with four pinion planets, okay? They did not come with five pinion. If you got a five pinion and a 60, someone put that in there. The other thing the 60 has is a pretty plain Jane input shaft, okay? These rings were more spaced out. There's no weird land, no need for a speed sensor, none of that. Now I wanna hold these up for comparison as best I can. Now, I'm not sure if everybody can see that difference, but the 4L70 land is almost in the middle below the 4L60 overrun land. That's how much of a difference GM moved these. I've already shown you the 60 harness. No extra bullshit there. Just your standard plugins and 13 pins, okay? We'll work with just about everything. And here is the 60s pump backing. No special holes, no nothing. Very plain. The stator that belongs in this will only have small holes, nothing as big as a marble to fit an extra sensor. So guys, in an aftermarket scenario, if you're purchasing, please talk to us. Please talk to us about the program you're using. Please talk to us about your build and we'll set you on the right path and potentially save you a lot of money to avoid a core charge and potential aggravation down the road on a 70. So stock for stock, those are the comparisons. We had 300 horsepower, 350 horsepower, and about 400 from the factory due to very minute differences. All the parts do interchange, but that doesn't mean they work together. So to be honest, it all boils down to one extra sensor. And that's what makes a 70 a 70. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.